Hello everyone. I hope you guys are having a great week and that uh, you're being productive. Anyway, today's video is my take on the Momentum M400 and the Griffin Mephisto stereo amplifier. You guys heard him on the previous video. You guys had an opportunity to choose your favorite presentation. Okay, um, both presentations, in my opinion, were um, really, really special in their own way. I don't think there is really anything wrong with either one. I think it's about preference. As I have said it many times, this is really about preference more than anything else. Okay, but of course you guys want my take, my opinion. You guys want to hear what I have to say. And I'm going to do just that today. So, let's go over it. Who should own the Dan D. Agostino M400? Who is this amplifier designed for? Okay, this amplifier is for someone who likes smoothness. It's also for someone who is tired of trying a bunch of power chords, XLRs, DACs, speaker cables, you name it. In order to just make the components sound better, right? In order to make the system sound better. I think that the momentum is very forgiving in this regard. I think it sounds really good with just about anything you connect it to. I can't think of a time in which the momentum disappointed in terms of sound, in terms of uh, the tonality. It's actually very hard to make the momentum M400 sound bad. I mean, it's really an amplifier that's very friendly with the rest of your components. It's also for someone who appears, who really seems to like the aesthetics and the appearance of the product. I still believe the Momentum M400, in my opinion, are probably the best looking amplifiers I have ever owned. Um, I know some of you guys are not a fan of the chassis, the chrome, the bling bling. I get that. It's not made for everyone. And I think this is why he offers two different chassis, right? The black one with copper and this one that you see, which is the chrome version. Okay, so that you guys can choose the kind of color you want or the kind of aesthetics, if you will. It's also an amplifier that, in my opinion, is for someone who just wants to sit down and not pay attention to the differences between each recording. It really, um, it's an amplifier that every recording basically sounds the same. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I just mean it's tuned to sound a certain way. Okay? So, if you are that person that you are just you just want the system to sound good with any song you have. This is an amplifier for you. There's no question this amplifier is made for you. It's also for someone who doesn't really value extreme neutrality. I don't think this amplifier is anywhere near as neutral as the Mephisto, let alone the Boulder 2150. Now, that doesn't mean it's not neutral. It doesn't mean it doesn't let you hear changes when you change components. Yes, it does definitely, it definitely lets, lets you hear that, but it doesn't do it to the extreme. It doesn't do it to the point that you hear every micro, every added micro detail. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't do that for you. It doesn't make it so apparent. It's also for a person that is really not looking to make a lot of changes once you place the amplifier in the system. If you're just a person that you really, really just want to buy an amplifier so that things get better, right? You know, how I, I know some of you guys, and I was guilty of this too in the past, where you really are looking for an amplifier because you want your system to sound better, so you only change the amplifier, right? This amplifier will do that for you. It definitely will improve your, your system holistically um, without you making any necessary adjustments anywhere else. Now that doesn't mean again that it won't pay dividends if you buy a better power cord as I mentioned earlier, it will. But you really don't have to. 
It's also for someone who wants a small chassis and that doesn't want a tremendous amount of heat. The chassis are about, I believe, 90 pounds each, which is nothing in comparison to the Boulder 2150s, which weigh about 220 pounds, and the Griffin Mephisto weighs about 230 pounds. So the momentums are really, really easy to place just about anywhere. Very, They're relatively light in comparison to the other amplifiers that I have. And uh, they run hot, but they don't run like crazy hot that you burn your hand. But they do run. If you leave them on, they get pretty toasty. I will say that to you, okay? But there's not really many requirements for the amplifier. Like, you don't need a fan. You don't need to have a cabinet that's got, you know, um, an incredible amount of breathing room. Of course, it's better if you do have breathing room for the amplifiers. But I don't expect you to put these amplifiers in an enclosed compartment uh, because that, that defeats the purpose of the beauty of the amplifier. So I am sure these amplifiers will be out in the middle of your room so that you can see them and those who come to see you also can notice the amplifiers. Also, I think this amplifier is for someone who really isn't, who really is not much of a critical listener and is not going to pay extremely, extreme attention to the momentum's weaknesses, one of them being the lack of extreme neutrality. Okay, so... If you're not really like one of those people that need to have the best measurements on the product that you buy, for instance, right? Magical measures really well when it comes to speakers. The Boulder 2150s you have here, I believe they were, they are said to be the best measuring amplifiers that Stereophile has ever had. Um, I think you can look up that, that, that review as well of the amplifiers. So if you're a person that does not care about measurements, that's not your intention. You want to just buy something that sounds really good. This amplifier is really for you, okay? Because um, I do believe that it's just tuned to sound good. Uh, they don't pay attention too much to what it measures. Maybe other than the power, right? The 400 watts per channel to make sure it doubles down to 800 and then doubles to 1600. That, yes, they pay attention to. But I don't think they pay attention to other more detailed measurements that they sometimes do on components that are re reviewed by stereophile and also of course the last one is this is an amplifier for someone who has sixty five thousand dollars msrp to spend on it okay so that basically summarizes who i think this amplifier is made for great amplifier by all means i have nothing bad to say about it but it is, like I said to you, made to sound a certain way, made to interact with your components a certain way. And that's great. That's great because I know some of you guys have a system that is designed to just take you away from your everyday life and stress. You want something that can just take you and walk away with you uh, from, you know, our daily struggles, right? So this amplifier will do that for you. It's not going to ever be... Uh, feisty with you. I, I can't think of a better word. It's just not going to fight you um, by any means. All right, next is who is the Mephisto, the Griffin Mephisto for? Who is this amplifier primarily designed for? This is this is an amplifier that's designed for a person who wants to who wants the a race car experience. This is really, really a race car vehicle in my opinion. Someone who loves sheer control and muscularity. Again, the Mephisto has the most tremendous control I have ever heard on any of my power amplifiers, Amplifiers. period. It just grabs my woofers and just literally mauls them the way a lion mauls a zebra. I mean, it's just incredible what the Griffin does when it comes to that control. I don't think I have ever had an amplifier that naturally grips on the woofers better than the Mephisto. Um, they just, it just does, you know, without you having to really do anything else in, in, in on your system, it just does it. It's also for someone who loves pure Class A sound. Um, that three-dimensionality, that purity, this is definitely that type of amplifier. It's also for someone who wants neutrality and values facts over fiction. 
Again, you have to value facts over fiction. If you like fiction, this amplifier is not for you. If you read sci -fi, if you like sci-fi, this amplifier is, there's no sci-fi about this amplifier. This is literally the facts. This is an amplifier that will not lie to you. Also, it is for the person that does not care about the imposing physical presence of the amplifier. It is a rather large amplifier. I would say this amplifier is actually larger than the boulders. Believe it or not, it's got more a little more bulk to it. And very difficult to lift. Um, you need a stand for it. You need to be okay with it being in the in the middle of your room, like I have it here, uh, because unfortunately, this is not the amplifier you are going to be placing on a shelf uh, and just shut the door behind it. It doesn't. It's not made for that. Okay, you can't choke it like that. It's also for the audiophile who wants to fine-tune things. What do I mean by that? If you're a person that loves cars, and I continue to use cars, I like to continue to use the car analogy because I think we understand a little more. I, I get to explain it a little better. Um, if you're a person that you love to buy a car because you want to play over the weekend and get on, the, on your back under the car and turn wrenches and adjust the suspension, and you know you like to change the oil and you love to try different spark plug wires and yada, 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 this is the amplifier for you. This is the amplifier for you because this amplifier will let you feel what you did upstream. It will let you hear what cable sounds um, different, what, what each cable sounds like, what changes happen when you changed anything upstream. It'll let you hear that. It's also, this is an interesting one, this thought, but I think this thought is going to be very, very, very awesome. Um, this is an amplifier that is made for someone who hates to eat, totally hates to eat microwave dinners and prefers to be the cook in the kitchen. That's basically the most spot-on analogy I can give you. That is the amplifier for you. If you hate microwave dinners or meals, those, th those that are already ready for you, this amplifier will be the one for you because this amplifier comes and it needs your direction and it needs your instructions in order to continue to elevate the presentation of your system. It's also for the kind of person that welcomes the truth about the current state of their system. It's also for that person that is not afraid to experiment with other components in order to accommodate the amplifier, right? So if you're a person that you just love to, you know, try different things and you love to tweak things here and there and you like to make changes and adjustments to see what happens, right? That experiment type of personality if you have that in you and that's who you are in life in general, that amplifier would be something you would love because you are going to hear things that you thought maybe would never make a difference in uh, your system, but that amplifier will let you hear if indeed things change or didn't change. And the last one, this is for the person, and I had to throw this in there, of course. This is for the person who wants to own the best stereo amplifier that Jay has ever owned and possibly the best overall amplifier that I have had. Now, I'm still deciding on this last point that I made. I'm having a difficult time deciding between the Boulder 2150s and the Griffin Mephisto because they're so different and so special at what they do that if I ever decide to sell one or the other, it will be simply because I just identified myself a little closer to one than the other. But by no means will it be because I feel one is just totally superior to the other. That's not the case. I have been living with both amplifiers for some time, and I'm telling you, the Mephisto and the Boulder um, are very different, very hard to compare. Um, but... That said, I will say this to you guys. Today is the last time you see the Dan Agostino M400s in my room. They are going to be shipped away, and I am, com I am done with the Momentum line until the future, to see what the future holds and to see if there is anything else 
that they can produce at some point down the road that can strike my interest. I think I have a very clear understanding of, of the product now and, and I know what it does and I know the weaknesses and strengths. For me personally and what I do here on this channel, the momentum was just a great opportunity to show you guys one of the best sounding amplifiers I've ever owned, but also my preference when it comes to amplification and that is the preference of being with an amplifier that's neutral because I go through so many so many changes here, cables, power cords, you guys see me all the time. I need to be able to hear these changes. And for me, it's just quite easier to hear these changes through the Mephisto and through the Boulder. Um, and it just, for me, it doesn't make sense to continue with the momentum. You know, it doesn't, um, I love the product, as I said, great product, nothing bad to say about it. Um, but as you know, there are preferences out there and I have my preference, and right now, my top two amplifiers ever, ever to have ever owned are the Griffin Mephisto and the Boulder 2150 monoblocks. I don't think I have had an ampli amplifiers that um, make it so difficult for me to decide, and those two are battling, battling day in, day out uh, to see which one I end up um, keeping for the long haul. For now, guys... That's all I got. Thank you for your time. I hope you guys are liking my videos and please continue to subscribe and support me. Thank you again, guys, for your time. Take care.